we'll give it a whirl. So nothing, nothing ventured. Good. So has anybody come across the book before? No, not no, this one. No. So it was new to me. It was um, we so within Action Coach. We have a, a book of the sort of week. I was book of the month, book of the week, and uh, a few people were using this as a basis of uh, some training. Uh, so it was all good to good to see that. Uh, um, and I just thought, you know, when I got it, I thought, oh, actually, you know, we we have the quarterly book club. So, you know, why not have, uh, try and make it a little bit more regular now we're sort of on lockdown. But it, it's always difficult to read a whole book in, in such a short period of time. But I thought, well, actually, there's no reason why people can't read this in, uh, you know, within a week. And, and even if you haven't read it, you know, to have it on the screen and read it as we go would seem to make a, you know, um, a good thing to do. So uh, we'll, we'll see if we can attract a few more people as we go. But, uh, you know... Uh, I've got to kick off at some stage. It's probably a week earlier than I wanted to, but then I was thinking, well, lockdown might finish in three weeks and then we won't better do it. So uh, why not? So, so I hadn't really thought beyond sort of just going through each chapter and just really getting your thoughts of you know, what you got out of uh, each part. So, you know, we'll, we'll just sort of do it on that basis. Uh, um, and I'll... Uh, so, you, so, Gary, have you... You managed to read it, did you say? No, I didn't. Unfortunately, I had a, a, a brief look through. Looked at some of the uh, some of the rules. Yeah. Well, look. Um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of just we'll go through, and yeah, if you want, to, I mean, it doesn't take much to just read the sort of the page. But uh, um, if there's anything that sort of we'll look at each one and just see what what crops out. Uh, so. Sabrina, did anything come out of rule one for you and uh, and where so really where you are with the business at the moment or you know just just in ge in general really well um funnily enough i don't have any notes written against rule one but um the fact that it says think about leadership first and location second um as you know in in my circumstances i've actually been working remotely for the last two and a half years so I've got quite used to working remotely, but I've now had to get used to everyone else being remote. And, and that's where it's very different. Um, so, I, yes, um, at the same time, I was trying to, to sort of ease myself out of the business. Um, but because of us being that much busier now and the way things are going, um, I actually see myself now as the leader keeping the remote workers together. So this is very timely. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes it, when, when you have a sort of change of situation, change of environment, it does make you think more about what you should have been doing all along. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, when, when you are face yeah. to face, it's all, it's all too easy to, you know, just get in the flow and ignore these things. And now we're remote. We, we sort of think, Oh God, I have to do that. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, with your with your other half you know when you live together all the time you forget to say you know i love you and you know and uh, but when you're away you, you tend to do that more often than when you're together so uh, it's, a, it's a funny old thing how that works but, uh, uh so yeah so really it's it's this whole thing of you know leadership is leadership it doesn't matter whether it's remote or face to face you know it's still the same process and the process is there to get a result you know you lead people to a destination um you know that destination is no different uh it's just sort of the mechanism of the way we do it can actually change but, uh hannah was anything sort of stood out for you on on that one i think that's just um the same thing really that it's leadership first location second i mean this is something that's quite uh new for us um i guess um traditionally or under normal circumstances i mean we all work in the office um so we've got uh there's four people working remotely who would normally be in the same office as myself and um my dad who's my business partner so uh it's a little bit strange having uh the girls who sort of do marketing customer service they're all remote at the moment so um yeah it's um i hadn't really thought about it like that so um yeah this was really timely um when i saw that you this was your recommendation it was uh interesting timing because different people seem to be working um so my girl who does my marketing seems to be really thriving working at home 
others are struggling more so it was just interesting like some of the other rules and suggestions just um yeah make a lot of sense for us yeah yeah no i think i think it is as we come on to it the, that treating people as individuals you know it's you've you got that people are some people are coping really well with this you know and same with business owners some people business owners are thriving now mm. you know, some some are struggling you know with with that sort of change of environment uh, so if we move on to to rule two then um this sort of thinking of leading differently um gary what have you noticed i've just you guys probably haven't met each other have you so gary do you want to <laughs> uh sort of let the others go let others know what you do and and how are you working at the moment um hi there um uh, I, I work for a small shipping company based in southampton uh we we look after three different companies with about 50 employees now i'm the i'm the financial controller so i look after the finances on a day-to-day -day. <clears throat> excuse me i also get involved with it and hr and uh like everybody else We've everybody's still working, uh, but uh, they're all working from home. Yeah. Um, so for, for for us, it's been a massive step change uh, from you know, very much of a an old school sort of you no know, work from the office, be be at the office sort of thing. <clears throat> so for us to go from from that to everybody working from home, is 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 it's been massive. Um, and like you say, looking through these rules. Um, you know, leading remotely requires you to lead differently. Uh, absolutely, it's, it's been um, a big uh, mind change or a change of mind for, for for a lot of people, especially in the upper management. Um, so, yeah. Have you have you found it easy, or have you found it? We found it easier than we thought. We, we found it easier than we thought. We were yeah. we already very much um, you know set up uh, ready. Uh, part of our contingency planning, you know, was you know, okay, if the if the office ever burnt down, you know, what could we do, you know? So we've always had that in the background, um, but we had a few more days to put that into practice. So it was quite easy for us to then change everybody working from home. So the the technical side, which I think mm. um, we can come on to later, uh, we were we were quite lucky with, um, but the mindset I think took a little bit longer. Um, so it's, it's it's been interesting for, for, for most of the guys it's, it's it's been okay so so we think so we think you know yeah <laughs> it's, 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 i think i think that is part of the problem is you know we, we you can have a skype call with somebody and and they come across well um because i had one with a with a client uh, the other week and we, we're having a skype call we're halfway through the meeting uh, I'm thinking, yeah, this is this is going okay. The person's doing really well. We got the plan, and then suddenly um, they broke down, and it was like this sort of then this sort of verbal sort of onslaught of all the things that were going wrong, and you know, and it was like, well, where, where did that come from? You know, because we don't see, sometimes you know the face to face, we pick up on the energy that's in the room. We might be saying things, so we've got that sort of kinesthetic feeling when we're remote we're we're reliant on on fewer and fewer senses to actually pick up the underlying messages so so therefore we have to be far more astute with this you know and and also sometimes realize that what we see is not what we're going to get um and i think that's the bit that he sort of says at the last of this you know we need to do something smarter faster you know it, it's the pace of this thing that is picks up because of, because it's you know we're reliant on technology the pace can go up and we've got to handle that and, and be able to look at it so, so i thought i thought and it's that brings on to this sort of rule three you know know that working remotely changes the interpersonal dynamics even if you don't want it to <laughs> have you got any sort of examples sabrina where you've sort of experienced that um just trying to think not immediately. Um, what about you, Hannah, with, with your guys? I mean, you said that there were some were doing well and some weren't. Yeah, um, I think it's kind of, well, I think it's touched on in other chapters as well, but definitely because, um, 
Yeah, so we've got, I've got uh, two girls in the marketing department who um, are thriving and especially the marketing manager just thriving, working from home. It just obviously really suits her. Um, but then my customer service manager has definitely struggled. Um, and I think, I think it's complete, I think it's a complete mixture of things, but I was just reading uh, in more detail um, this third part. And as much as I think we, uh, all get on very well in person like when the girls are in the office they got on really really well whereas it's just it's not been terrible and it's definitely taken some adjustment but it's been a little more frosty just and I think some of it comes down to just the way people communicate you know I was I was trying to discuss it with the girls and say right what's what not going wrong but what's happening here and I think it says virtual communication changes the interpersonal dynamic and I just think uh, where we communicate on WhatsApp, you know, how you text can be quite, yeah. um, you know, one of the girls, uh, the marketing manager, she's quite sarcastic and that is just how she texts, but it's quite hard to read that. Whereas when you're face to face in person, you can tell that someone's being sarcastic or you can hear it in their tone. You just can't do that with WhatsApp. So that's where we've had to sort of say, right, we need to just try and be a little, you know, while we're all working from home, the group messages need to be a little bit more professional, you know, let's not have, mm. Um, let's try not to keep try to keep it emotion free because I think people just interpret things you know in the wrong way excuse my cat um, mm -hmm. so yeah it, yeah definitely it's it's affected her massively I think I think she's missing just that face-to-face -face contact um, and I think it, I'll, I won't go into too much further detail I think it's covered in other chapters but just things like that human interaction is a big part and maybe I've underestimated how important it is to yeah sort of check in that visibility and i think you know we we do a lot on uh disc profiling yeah you know, and did you if you watched the uh webinar last week we were talking about a little bit of this um yeah. and it was that you know the any anyone on the the sort of ins profiles the people you know that they get a lot of their sense of of, of well-being being around other people yeah Bs and Cs don't have that problem. You know, they're, they're very task focused and they get their sense of well-being from completing tasks and actually taking them out of the, the office environment can actually help them because actually I don't have the interruptions that I would do at work. Uh, so this, yeah. so now I'd say, it, you know, remote working, it's, so, it's even more important to really understand the profiles of the people we're dealing with. Um, and therefore we can say well the D's and C's great well I can probably just touch base with those once a week the I's and S's I will probably need to touch base with them every day uh, to give them that sort of sense of, of well-being so, yeah it mentions disc profiles a little later and that's that's kind of where my mind went I don't think it's coincidence that um, yeah my marketing girls who are definitely much more naturally C's a very task orientated a kind of thriving whereas this individual is definitely more of a social yeah. you know more of a, an s um she she likes talking she likes seeing people she likes human interaction as we all do so yeah it kind of made a lot of sense when i read it like that yeah yeah cool and then rule four was using technology as a tool not a barrier i mean that one sort of i think has been forced on us a little bit you know the fact yeah. that i think a big percentage of the population now has suddenly become zoom experts you know where where was zoom you know two three months ago it's like you know uh, if you if you could know these things and buy shares in those companies uh, <laughs> beforehand it would be fantastic uh you know i was dreading having to use skype because I, I use it occasionally but it it was always clunky it never really worked in this sort of situation was never quite right and so there was there was a fear of using technology in these things, and then suddenly you know Zoom has just made it easy. You know I'm I'm even, I'm doing Pilates on Zoom now. I've got uh, I'm actually talking to my uh, golf coach and thinking well actually why why not have a golf lesson you know in in the back garden? Uh, there's no reason why I can't do that. So it just it, you know once technology is there, the fear goes and it becomes you know actually em embracing it. Uh, any any examples for you, Gary, that uh, you've sort of seen it either way as a barrier or as a as a bonus? You on you on mute still? There we go. Hi, sorry about that. 
Um, no, I think it's been been a bit of a, bit of a boom. It's, uh, it's been a, a steep learning curve for a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of people, like you said, their experiences of, of Skype, etc., um, were, were were quite negative. Uh, whereas now we have to use like uh, Microsoft Teams um, and also Zoom. You know, they're light years ahead of when all these the, these things first started. You know, with broadband, you know, um, improvements as well for a lot of people. Um, it actually works. Mm. You know, like, like you said, you know, it's, uh, you know, having your golf lesson, it, it, is, it is possible. You know, with a laptop and a broadband connection with Zoom, it's it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, for, from a work perspective, you know, we've we've gone through from where we've been used to use it occasionally in the office for for, for board meetings, etc., for for some of our got uh, guys abroad, to you know having you know weekly meetings, uh, both just you know just the team, so so my team in the accounts department, which was just just five of us, to to having twenty of us on a on a, on a Friday afternoon, just just you know gossiping, just you know. Just catching up, sort of thing. It's it's, it's been been really good for us. Yeah. Um, but but for a lot for, for a lot of people, it's always no, no, it don't work. It's, it's, whereas now, you know, we have to try it. You know, and it's it's a, it's a nice bonus that it does actually work. Yeah, I mean, ch change is always good when yeah, you know, there there is no option. <laughs> you, you, got, you you either change or you you know you you're out of the game. So uh, I think that that's really good uh, and. Sabrina, what what about you with uh, with technology? I know I know you you've embraced it, John. John, not quite so yet. But, uh... <laughs> My brilliant husband, who's so good at so many things, has a mental block when it comes to technology. He knows it's essential, and he loves it when it works. But the moment anything isn't quite as he thinks it should be or it goes wrong, it's a big challenge. But yeah. because he's not working remotely, except for when we talk to you on Zoom together, um, but it's interesting because. Um, um, my sister has started doing piano lessons on Zoom and even that she says actually is manageable. Um, my two ladies, they're different generations and the younger one is actually, uh, we've just got a new laptop for her so she'll be up and running very rapidly. Um, the older one is frightened of technology, a bit like my husband and I think that having to work on her own at home is probably a bit of a challenge for her but I hope that the silver lining will be that will actually increase her confidence and when she comes back to the office she won't be so dependent on other people um, mm. having to assure her that she can do it. Yeah yeah no, I think it's uh, yeah it, everyone's I mean that's the beauty everyone's in the same boat everyone's having to adapt so that that yeah. growth curve is gonna gonna, gonna definitely increase. Uh, so rule five then, leading requires a focus on outcomes, others and ourselves. Um, what, were you, what was your take on this one, Hannah? Unmute myself. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, I, I always have a focus on, I think I focus too much on others. And I think it was interesting that it said uh, outcomes and ourselves. That's where I fall down. Sometimes I constrain oh. the, um, what the desired outcome is. You know, where our um I'm trying to give others some perspective where so we're in quite a rapid stage of growth at the moment like gearing up for our rebrand and obviously you know we've got uh 25 of us 20 so a few are on furlough uh four from the office are all working from home but the majority are still on site to be fair it's about 15 on site um and i think sometimes where uh, with all our units, we've got seven units on um, on this commercial site and where they're quite scattered, sometimes the outcome, I think, can get lost where so many people can be involved on a project and are kind of trying to talk to each other and have you WhatsApp that person? Do you know, and, and sometimes I think that's where I go wrong is I forget to just focus on what was the, actually the point. Why did we start doing this? What do you know? If, does that make sense? Um, and also ourselves, you know, as a leader, I think sometimes where I'm trying to coordinate multiple people I can forget myself very easily I think yeah. any leader does that so I think anyone especially when you care about your staff like I'm very lucky to say that I've got a very very good team and I really do care about my staff and I very easily forget that you know and I think dad is um quite guilty of this as well you know stressing himself out to the point where he's you know 
feeling unwell because you know you can feel so much pressure so yeah i think it's a good um a good reminder that have you thought about all three of these points before you set yeah out the task? yeah i think you know of, often when we get into sort of crisis mode like this the, the outcome becomes very short term yeah so we switch from a long-term focus into a short-term focus and then we we sort of get through that but our focus doesn't shift back into the long term so we get stuck in this short-term outcomes um and then again with ourselves you know m most of us are sort of are doers so we, we get on we do it we do 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 and we forget about our own health our own free time so i was you know, i was working with a, a client uh, this afternoon on on default diary and actually you know he was getting down and fed up and we went back to his default diary and looked at it and you know and, and just questioned you know well doing these two activities back to back is is that good sense you know do they do they flow you know you're starting something that is really upbeat straight into something that is is a tough negative thing um you know and, and another one that was you know fir the first thing he did in the day was look at emails and it's like, well, when have you ever had a good email that's come through that made you feel really great and wanted to attack the day? You know, you, you never do that. So don't do your emails first thing, move your emails later. So it's really look, you know, that sort of almost that check in, that self awareness that a great leader has to say, how do I, how do I feel? If I feel confident, if I feel strong, if I feel clear with purpose, then I'm going to exude that. If I don't feel that, then I, whether, you, you can't hide that from your team. Your team will pick up on that, that sense of despair, that sense of frustration, whatever it is, and they will actually act in the same way. So, so I think you're right, Hannah, that really look, almost I think yourself should be first. So I think lead yourself. If you can't lead yourself, there ain't no way you're going to lead other people. So be, be self-aware, number one, then get clarity around the outcomes and then deal with leading other people. I mean, for me, it's in generally in that order. Uh, the most, you know, if you, if you look at emotional intelligence, EQ, you know, self-awareness is at the top of the top of the scale. Most bad leaders are, are not bad leaders because of their skill sets, just because they're completely unself-aware. You know, they've got, they've got no idea how, what impact they're having on their team. Just, just from, their, their moods and things so yeah cool so rule six then leading successfully requires achieving goals of many different types so so this really comes back to that outcomes sort of led um so sabrina what what was your take on that uh, that chapter uh, yeah, um, sorry, I've got my pages muddled three for my notes. But, oh, yes. Um, right. I've put a big question mark next to where it talks about tools like electronic dashboards, intranets and online project management systems, because I don't know a lot about, in fact, I don't know anything about those, and nor do my ladies. Yeah. Um, but I do think that working remotely, there is a big difference between goals and expectations. Um, it, it's one thing just to list what the goals are, you know, like on the 90 day plan, we will do this by then and we will do it this way. But I think you need much more emphasis on the, on the, the smaller time stages when you're working remotely so that mm. they can get on with the, I think it talks about the smaller chunks somewhere, breaking things down into smaller yeah. goals, smaller steps. And I think that's yeah, much I think, more I think that might be moving into rule seven, wasn't it? Sorry, does it? Right. Um, so about realistic goals. Um, yeah, it does talk about expectations. Yeah. In, yes, okay. I, I, yeah. I've sort of combined I, the two. I mean, really. I, I would agree with that. I think, you know, we were talk I think we were talking about that last week was, you know, in a remote world, I, I think the goals become smaller and, and shorter. Um, and therefore the, the activity becomes a lot more bite-sized. Um, I was trying to think why, 
why I felt that and uh, <laughs> why remote actually allows that to happen. Um, and it, I suppose it, for me, it goes back to if the pack are working all together towards a certain thing, you get that sense of everyone's you, everyone's working to what, whether they are or not, everyone's working towards that bigger goal. When you're remote, you don't have that sense of how am I doing compared to everybody else? You know, mm. I, I lose that feedback. The, the feedback loop that I would normally have working in a team is suddenly gone. Uh, and therefore the focus needs to be come down to, right, these are the five things I need to do today. You know, have I got those done? Great. I can move on to tomorrow. Um, so I do think our focus becomes, you know, narrower and shorter when we are remote. Um, and um, have, have you sort of seen any signs of that, Hannah? Yeah, definitely. I was just reading, it's the line that says, um, uh, individuals can drift losing sight of both the big picture and their role too. And I think for me, that probably sums up what's happened with my lady where, um, I think, I don't think she's lost sight of her role. I think she's lost sight of her role in the bigger picture because she's not physically on site and seeing, you know, where um, at the moment all the staff that are on site are very aware of, we're working towards this rebrand. And I think where she's just had several weeks not sort of in the team, she's she kind of just doing her job day to day and she's just kind of forgotten that she is part of this bigger picture and we're all obviously collectively working towards something, which is why actually before this call, I was looking at a... Um, an online dashboard called monday.com which allows people to you know your whole team can log in and um you can it gives you visibility on what projects people are working on it's like a traffic uh, traffic light system like a color coding system so you allocate people to it so you know who's working on what and it's like basically red yellow or green and um, so if someone's struggling with something they can turn it red so that you know that they need help so to me i think an electronic dashboard it's almost like a kpi board in a weird way it's like a you know a kind of similar to that maybe not mm. quite kpi but it's uh this is what i'm working on it's just a visible uh diary almost i guess of what someone's working on at any point but for me i think that's going to be something that i need to really work on because i think that will help people to feel like they can flag where they're struggling and it's just that visibility for me to be able to see that yeah yeah i think that's the bit that sabrina was sort of you know that those electronic dashboards you know uh, microsoft teams you know i've got a few people that are moving heavily into that to, to allow that um you know generally in sort of you know, production we've got visibility of, of flow of work um but when we come into the administration side we don't have that you know we might rely on the fact that you know i've given you a set of tasks and i see you working every day gives me the confidence that you're doing the work if i don't see you doing that suddenly i lose confidence well are you working or are you not working yeah. uh, and like you said you know some people are easily distracted um, that, that's literally like, exactly what's happened in this yeah. case like i do trust i do trust her it's not a, a trust issue it's just that when i see her in the office every day i know she's doing it and i know she's working but where it's been several weeks now and it's like i think if i just had that visibility and that check-in that touch point where I, I don't want to micromanage i don't want to have to look into the inbox and say oh right has this been cleared today um but i think if there was just somewhere that i could log in and see that it's been tick green to say it's been cleared for today then i know yeah that's been taken care of yeah so. yeah so it's and, and it, I think it's, it's as much for them as well. So they can see yeah. their progress, you know, ha, yeah, have I had a good day today? You know, if I don't get feedback from the people around me, then it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to know, you know, um, you know, had uh, clients that have sort of got to the end of the day and thought, well, has today been a good day? And, and, and certainly from a sales marketing point of view, because of where we are, we're not getting the sales result. Normally somebody says, I've, I spent a day marketing or a day on the phone and I've got three appointments and uh, three sales and, and that's made me feel good. Um, now we're not necessarily getting that feedback. We're not able to make those appointments, get those sales. So the only thing that we can actually monitor is, is activity. You know, have I actually done the activity that could have led to those sales? And if I've done the activity, then I should be able to go, job done, great. I can finish with a smile on my face. Um, but I think you know, there's, there's more frustration and, and, and potentially depression coming in 
because people are doing work and not getting any feedback. I'm doing all this stuff and I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. that, that is, is, is tough for people to deal with that have had years of actually just having instant feedback. I think I'm very guilty of that. Like I've not thought about it from her perspective where she's used to hearing from me all the times of every day and it's suddenly gone literally from a hundred to zero, you know, like I literally, I'm not communicating with her. So I think it's very much like, you know, something that I need to address her. Cause I think it's, I do, you know, I say it's my fault, but you know, I, I can see where I'm going wrong with her. So definitely. Yeah. And I'd say ideally if the system can provide that feedback, then that's brilliant. You know, yeah. if you have to top that up, then yes, that's, that's something you need to do. Um, so Gary, anything from rule seven that, uh, sort of stood out for you cool. oh, no, no. Um, yeah I think um, it's like touching on the previous point it's like you say it's, it's setting those goals to try and keep in touch with people um, what, what are they up to sort of thing so you know, you know, for us, we you know we've moved a lot of the goalposts from from a monthly basis to to a weekly basis. Yeah. Um. Just to, just because you know one you know it's you know it is crisis mode. We do need the information more. You know. So so from my background, it's all very much uh, uh, accounts. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, credit control, cash basis, and, and and that sort of thing. You know, higher ups. You know, we're, we're part of a big international group. So. You know those sort of questions. You know, we, ever since this started, we knew we had to be on top of things. You know, people would want the information a lot, lot quicker um, as, as as this crisis goes on, sort of thing. So for us, we've moved the goalposts. So rather from a monthly reports, we do weekly reports. So you know, like like Hannah was saying, she's you know struggling to to to, to keep in touch and keep on top of, of what's happening. You know, it's it's, it's changed. So. You know, I don't keep on touch with everybody on a day-to-day basis. Mm. But, you know, we have a weekly meeting, sort of thing, to see see, see what's going on, and, and and also, like you say, quick emails. You know, where are we with this? How are things going? Are there any issues? Um, so it's it, it makes a lot of sense. Rule seven, um, like you say, it's, it's trying to change those goals. You know, at the moment we're just trying to get through the, the next three months, let alone, let alone the next three years. Yeah, yeah. No, I think your your first point there is, and it says that in the last thing, you know, realistic goals. You know, one that stretches your belief, yet you can create a real, a workable, real world plan that can re- reach it. There's no point in having goals now that you can't reach. Um, and I think anyone that's running, you know, goals now that were the same as the goals three months ago you know is is crazy you know it's it, you've got to reset completely uh in your mindset you know uh, some, sometimes you know you've got to set them higher because you know you know like like hannah's guys have you know the sales have gone up so you set higher goals you know for, for everybody else it's about right actually setting more realistic goals um in a world where we don't know what realistic is you know because <laughs> no, no one's been here so uh so I think re- reviewing the goals and I always say when you're setting goals for other people, you know, the, the best thing you can do as a leader is, is reward and thank people for achieving. Yeah. That's easy management. Yeah. Well done. That was brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. What's tough is saying, why didn't you achieve your goal? Why didn't you achieve your goal? Why didn't you achieve your goal? And if you're doing that all the time, then either you've got the wrong person or you've got the wrong goal. And, and you're in control of both of them. And, and, and maybe sometimes you've got to set different goals or more realistic goals for that person to achieve and then get them up. Because you know, no, one, no one comes to work to fail. You know, they didn't take this job on to fail at the job they're doing. You know, they, they came to do a good job with the skills that they've got in the environment that you've given them. And, and if you constantly allow somebody to fail every day, that their motivation and, and their input will just disappear. They'll keep coming to work and they'll keep taking their paycheck. Yeah, but you know, their, their ability to actually contribute will, will disappear and you'll be getting 50% of a person 
uh, that if you set realistic goals, you would have got 100% out of them. So, so, number eight. I love number eight. So, <clears throat> because, you know, that, that's what I've always seen management as. You know, management is coaching. You know, you, you've got, if you've seen me do the above the line, below the line slide, you know, ownership, accountability, responsibility at the top, blame, excuses, and denial. Management is, is almost managing blame, excuses, and denial. Leadership is where we're leading, you know, people that take full ownership. But the bit, the bit at the middle is coaching. Yeah, how, how do I get more performance out of my team tomorrow than I did today? What am I doing? Well, how am I encouraging them? You know, uh, Sabrina, we've, we've sort of got a classic example of that, I think, with Josh um, in, in the pack house. Um, you know, uh, John's been very, very busy in the office, you know, keeping, keeping the business afloat, keeping it going. And you can't do everything. So the guys on the, on the, the pack house are doing the best they can. And we've managed to bring in a, an experienced guy just to give the, the team there some support. And, uh, and I think Josh is thriving under that, isn't he? Yes, definitely. I think that the morale is, the morale has gone up because the orders have gone up, but it's also gone up hugely because all of a sudden they can see improvements being put in place that are going to make their job easier and make us achieve this four times as fast dispatch that we're trying to go for. Um, yeah, I, I've, I, John was more buoyant last night, even if it was two o'clock in the morning, than I have seen him for a long, long time. Yeah, we've got, we've got, just so you guys know, we've gone from, uh, well, under, was it about under a thousand boxes a week? Um, well, the, no, it was the daily orders um, when they came in. Um, yes, the, the maximum we used to get on any one day was about a thousand lines. That's the maximum of thousand per, uh, uh, boxes packed per, per day. Yes. And uh, so they've now got it up to 2,000. Uh, well, I mean, they were they were trying to deal with ten thousands. Um, yeah. I don't think that was just on one day, but it, it's John's words where it's quadrupled. Yeah. The, the weekly orders have quadrupled. So, so by by going in and coaching and and listening and you know working with these people, you know, it's amazing what change you know in their sort of mindset, in their persona is going to have. You know, and the added result is, you know, a, you know, a threefold, fourfold increase in production. You know, yeah. and that comes down to time. You know, coaching takes time. It, it's not a quick fix. You know, it's it, it, it's a time thing, not not necessarily a money thing. You know, and actually work. You know, looking looking at your whole production line and having the time yourself. Again, leadership starts with yourself. You've got to find that time. But to actually find that and then spend that time in the areas where it can be most effective will give you your biggest return on investment without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. You know, I, I'd certainly look back in, in my sort of my previous careers where I failed with people is, is purely where I haven't spent time with them. You know, and I haven't put that co you know, thought with coach. I've tried to manage them by setting them targets and then you know, looking disappointed when they don't achieve their targets. But, you know, if I'd spent the time coaching them, then we would have a, a, you know, a completely different result. Uh, so, you know, there are two big reasons coaching remotely feels more complicated. You know, yes, it, it has to be conscious and intentional. You know, communicating through the, the mediums is difficult. Um, but I think, what it does do, I, yeah, in a way, I think it's easier than it is face to face, because you know when, when you're face to face, it's almost well, I, I see you every day, therefore I feel like I'm interacting with you. Um, and um, so I, I was with a, I was talking to a client, and uh, it's, a, it's another husband and wife team, and uh, I said, well, how often do you communicate? And he said, well, we communicate all the time. And I said, well, no, but how often do you communicate as the MD and the, M and the marketing director and actually have a really meaningful discussion around in that relationship? And they said, well, we don't, you know, it, it's a, it's a 
you know, we, we see each other, we have a personal chat, but that relationship could be husband and wife. It could be friends. It could be anything. It's not a, a specific relationship or communication to actually achieve a result. So, so, you know, too many coaches do too much of the talking too much of the time. Well, on that basis, I'll shut up and say, Gary, what's, uh, what, what's your take on that? What's, have you, have you noticed, you know, where you, has it made it easier for you to coach your team or, or harder? A lot, a lot, lot harder. You say with, with, with coach, when you're, when you're in the office, the, the, the team, that they're sat around you, um, you, you pick up on conversations, you, you pick up on an email, you know, you, you overhear conversations between two people, you can, you know, add your input, they can come to you, they can, you know, pop their head up and, oh, what do you think of this? You know, that's, that's you know, for, for me, um, that's probably stopped completely over the last few weeks. Yeah. You know, so it's, 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 it's very difficult. So, you know, you know, it's a good point that you've raised because it's made me think, you know, how do I now coach them? You know, how do I now get the, the, the problems that they're, you know, um, encountering? You know, I don't hear from them on an on a, you know, hourly basis or even from a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So it's, it's very, very different and it's, it's some, some food for thought, definitely. Yeah, and I think, you know, it, it, to me it comes back to the default diary and you've got to book in check-in times. So you gotta look at your guys and say, right, wh when do I need to check in with you? Are you a daily check-in person? Are you a twice a week check-in person? Yeah, can I leave you for a whole week without any interaction? You know, it, it, to me, it, it's doing what we should do normally. You know, I think these are patterns that I would recommend, you know, if we were in the same office, because what that also does is it protects your time as well. when. When I say, right, I'm going to meet you on a, on a Tuesday, you know, every morning at 10 o'clock, you know, for 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm in control of that discussion. If I, I work at open door policy and you can come and see me anytime, you're now in control of that discussion. So if, if you're finding that you're being pulled from pillar to post, I'd always say, right, check in with your team at a set time every day. That's your time. If, you know, if you've got a question, no, 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 don't talk to me now. Unless it's critically urgent, come to me at your allotted time. And people like that. They get into the habit of 10 o'clock is my time. I get Gary's undivided attention at 10 o'clock. You know, he's not doing his emails. He's not, you know, we've all had it that you, you're typing something. Somebody walks into the room and you go, oh, fucking hell. You, know, you may not say it, but your whole body language says, excuse my French, but fuck off. <laughs> I don't want to see you. So, so you shouldn't get me on a Friday afternoon after drinking wine. I, I, I get, uh, uh, I, I start swearing too much. But, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a very good point. And to, and to be honest, like you say, you know, I've, you know, part of me is actually achieving more now that I'm stuck on my own without those, you know, distractions, those, you know, interactions, you know, the micro interactions it takes two minutes. Yeah, you know, but they all add up. Over, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and because they're not in your own, your so control, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah. in the middle of something, you get interrupted, you stop that. So that takes time to then refocus. You probably don't give them undivided attention because you're still worried about what you were doing. Nice. You know, so when you're in control of it, you know, the amount of time it should take should be half the amount of time. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you. So, Rule nine then, communicate in ways that work best. I think you know, we, we sort of talked about this, that golden rule of do unto others as you'd like done unto you. Well, it's nice. It's what we call the platinum rule of do unto others as they would have done unto themselves. So, you know, it, it's really that sort of, you know, looking at their profile. Uh, so, Sabrina, have we, have we done any profiling with you guys? No. Don't think we have, have we? No. So, so when, when, when we get five minutes to sit John down in front of a computer, um, Gary, have you done any profiling? Bits and pieces. I did did, did some a uh, long time ago. Not not anything with our current team. Uh, I know that's something yeah. that we spoke about. 
I, I would I would certainly you know recommend you know dig you know if, you, if you've done them in the past dig them out I know Hannah and the team we we did theirs uh, a few months ago and uh, but you know now when you're remote you almost should be there with their profile you know saying right how how with this profile how should I be managing you remotely yeah, you know, it'll give you such an insight as to how to get the best out of somebody uh, without, you know, sort of s sitting there and you're know, doing it the way you've always done it. So, um, in, that, um, in that rule 10, there were shades of how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. Um, and I must say, since I read that book some years ago now, but it has been fantastically helpful. And, and if, if you apply those, those, um, put yourself in the other person's shoes and ask them the questions the way you think they'd want to hear them. It does really work. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is a, yeah, it's such a, a powerful tool, you know, to, but the, the key I've learned for this one is time. Yeah. You, you have to be in a good place to be able to do this one. Well, yeah. If, if you're, if you're stressed, if you're in, if you're interrupted in the middle of something, and you try and do this, you, you'll fail. Because I think, I think you know, just thinking about this, if, if you come back to you know, our, our brain function and the rep, that reptilian brain, if, if you're in, you know, do mode, yeah, then you're, you're, you're pretty much reliant on that reptilian brain, you know, your instinct of just doing stuff. And then now somebody comes in and starts talking to you, where you really need to engage that limbic system, that emotional brain of actually understanding people's body language. And then, then you need to interpret that you know, using your neocortex. So those two functions, if you're, if you're in do, do, do mode, are just not going to happen. And you're, you're going to react. And this is why emails are so dangerous, mm -hmm. is because I, I send an email, but I've got no idea what brain function you're going to be in when you read that email. If you're in reptilian fight or flight mode, yeah, then I, I only have to put one word slightly out of kilter and you will jump down my throat. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really, you know, making that time to actually say, you know, I need I need to understand where you are. Okay, I need to feel. And, it, it, and as I said that example I had from a, a while back, where the uh, the lady was uh, you know not in a great space, but it took a bit of time for that to come out. Um, was uh, you know was key. So uh, you know it's it's really you know, we really do need to understand that. So, Anything, Hannah, that uh, else that comes out of that one for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I think for me, I've just been thinking about, obviously, I've put a big note next to the uh, disc profiling to dig them out, because when I was reading this, it made so much sense when I thought about um, the lady who's finding it more challenging. When I thought about her disc profile, like I've already said, it made a lot of sense. Like, you do get so much out of understanding, and I'm trying to apply how she thinks and yeah it's just so true that if you allocate time so that you can actually think on their level because funnily enough when um just issues that are arising from like her struggling with working remotely um kind of happened earlier in the week uh literally what you said earlier where you know i was in the middle of typing an email and i could see my phone blowing up you know on whatsapp group notifications and and my um, my frame of mind, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to deal with it at that point because my reaction was just for God's sake, shut up and get on with it. You know, it's just like, <laughs> um, whereas actually if I, you know, now that I've stepped back, you know, and I've got some time and I'm in a much, I'm much more relaxed right now. And I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it from her point of view, not my point of view and what she's thinking and why is she thinking that, um, you know, it's far easier to overcome, but definitely you have to be in the right, like, uh frame of mind i think um and i think for me that's going to be something that i just need to allocate more time to um i think i need to sit down and figure out my you know i think she needs more check-ins than for instance my marketing manager who i can just leave and i know i can check in with her once a week and she's fine but having that time like you said where you know i have a video call and there's that 
it's not quite the same as face to face, but it's kind of the next best thing rather than an email or a WhatsApp message, an actual video call where she's got my undivided attention, mm. I think will go a long way. So yeah, I think thinking on their level is um, important, but you have to be in the right frame of mind when you do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then rule 11 sort of building trust, you know, you know, trust doesn't happen by accident. I think that's, you know, that, that's, that's pretty obvious. Um, it, it is sort of, you know, it does help a lot. If, if the trust is there before you go remote, then, you know, you, that, that trust will then work. It's interesting to see, you know, if people are coming straight into this remote working, how, how easy it would be to build trust without having that face to face contact before um has anybody had any examples of that where you know you've never had a face-to-face -face meeting with somebody no not I my own staff no 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 i've got i mean i've got some guys that uh, are just reliant on remote workers so oh, you'll know, use outsource uh, people from around the world and to be honest you know i'm not sure what i think maybe the level of trust that you need isn't as high as it would be if they are full-time members of the team, as it were. But uh, certainly what I'm hearing back from them is they're not having much trouble with that. You know, but I think it is more of a transactional relationship uh, with those guys. So they're, they're very clear. If you don't perform, I'll switch you off tomorrow and start with somebody else. So they don't see it as necessarily a long-term relationship with these people that I'm I'm building you up. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to invest in you to be a better person. It does seem to be more of a transaction. You know, I'll use you while it works. And when it doesn't work, <clears throat> I'll switch you off and I'll start some, somebody else. <clears throat> but I, I don't know, you know, beyond that, how if anybody's actually managed to build really trust, deep trust driven teams just remotely. Um, that would be an interesting one to explore at some stage. So um so i think that the tools um so i think this was about sort of use it yeah using the different types of um communication styles with different people which goes back to sort of the uh um yeah the, sort of the different ways um <clears throat> so video recorded messages file point i think that's all fairly straightforward um so i'm gonna not don't think there's much that i thought was added any anybody come up with anything that was in there that we haven't really covered no well, that was fairly sort of straightforward just different ways <clears throat> so i think if we, if we come down to sort of you know this understanding ourselves which is where i said you know to me this is one of the first things that we should as leaders we need to, to look at um Yeah, so, so when you walk the plant floor, stand in the middle of a cubicle uh, where people are working, you can sense the mood. When, when you're remote, you can't sense that mood, that sort of sixth sense that we have. Um, and I quite like that. Identify people you trust. Uh, don't confuse this with people you like. <laughs> uh, and I think, I think that is the one that a lot of leaders fall into is you know i like the people that tell me that i'm great and the people that tell me i'm, I'm an arsehole i don't particularly like but actually it's the people that tell you you're an arsehole are generally the people you need to listen to um any, any experience of that gary what's uh because I, I, I do i smile when i look at that one because <laughs> it, it it's so unnatural for everybody so. um i completely get it I really do. Um, there's, there like you say, you know, uh, in, in my situation, there's a guy in the office sort of thing. We, we don't get right, on. Can you, can you come a bit close to the Sorry. mic, guys? Yeah, because I can't quite hear. There you go. Yeah, no, there's, a, there's a guy in the office, like I say, we don't particularly get on, but we listen to each other. Um, it's, 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 the way, it's funny the way you said it. Um, we, like you say, it's, when he does say something, it's worth listening to. Yeah. Um, and, and vice versa as well. You know, we, we know we don't get on, 
sort of thing. Uh, but we do uh, complement each, each other in different ways to actually achieve what we need to achieve. Um, it's, it's it's all very unspoken, um, but 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 it but it seems to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it is a it it is a tough one, you know, to find the person that you really. I think you you've got to respect them. You've got to you there's got to be something about what they do and how they do it that you respect. But you know, to 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 actually go to somebody and say, you know. Am I leading you in the right way, or you know, give me some feedback? Is is not an easy one, uh, and that's why sometimes you know doing 360 profiles is quite good, you know, because you can actually put the profile out to you know, a number of people and get that feedback as to how well I'm doing. Um, but you know, if you're going to take that, you've got to be prepared to change. There's no point in asking for feedback and then ignoring what everybody says. Um, because that just gets people's back up, you know. I've, I've told I've told you that I, I need this, and you still haven't done it. Um, so, um, any anything, not, Sabrina? A from lot of people don't that? like feedback either. So, sorry, Gary. A lot of people don't like feedback either. Some 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 it, are it's, a bit too critical, especially it, some people you don't like look, as well. So, no 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 one likes negative feedback, you know it's but i think as as you if you want to grow you've got to accept it you know and, it, and I, I can it to you know, playing sport you know and if you take golf as an analogy no, nobody likes to hit a ball out of bounds you know you get frustrated when you shank a ball or you duff it along the ground but you know all that is is the ball giving you honest and realistic feedback of how well you swung the club yeah, and, and if you didn't do that and it didn't give you that feedback, you couldn't improve. So we have to just, you know, almost hold that sort of fear inside us and go, do you want, you know, okay, just tell me as it is. I'd, I'd rather know and do something about it than never know and keep, you know, keep annoying you. So, so any, anything else, Sabrina, from, from you from that? Anything that jumped out? From that rule 14? Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, what you've just said, I'm sure it's absolutely right. But I must admit, looking back through my life, um, I've, I've fortunately been able to get on with most people that I've had to work closely with. But all the instances, even going back to school days, that the people that um, I, there was one person in each stage of my life that I really didn't get on with and I wouldn't have trusted them an inch. So. Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask that, but I I I can see what it's saying, um, and I know what it means, so I, I won't quibble with it. <laughs> but if you go back to the the school, if I, if you look back to when you were at school and the the teacher you respected the most, I bet they weren't the easiest teacher on you. Yeah, they would have been the one that would have been po probably not the hardest, but certainly the fairest and the most honest with their feedback? Um, well, the ones I'm thinking of had just had it in for me. I don't know what it was. They, they didn't like, and the same goes for when I was in the police force. Um, that there was, there was one teacher at both schools and there was one other police officer who just didn't like me and yeah. what I stood for. Um, and I, I would not have trusted them at all. And I certainly didn't appreciate any feedback from them. But I wasn't <laughs> getting that from even not just my friends, but senior officers. So I knew it was it was just yeah. a clash. Yeah. Oh, look, if, if the values and, and say that respect isn't there, then, yeah, just, you know, you've got to be able to walk away from that and ignore it. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you've got to find that person that is going to tell you as it is. And, and that, that's really what you know, a coach is, is, should be is there to do is you know is to really sort of tell you as it is you know not not make it nice and fluffy and make you feel good <laughs> not here to make you feel good we're here to get you the results that you want so yeah. so so then we got rule 15 so examine your beliefs and self-talk <laughs> um it, this is a this is a deep one um and, and probably, I, I would say, I don't think they talked about it, was the, uh, yeah, I'm a fraud. 
yeah, I'd, I'd say that is probably imposter syndrome. That's one of the biggest um, challenges with leaders at at high level. The higher you go, the bigger that one kicks in. And this is why we find that high Ds, you know, in that disc profile can be the ones that rise to the top quite quickly is because this one doesn't kick in till quite late. They're quite good at suppressing this because there's that ego that drives them forwards. But even those guys, when they, when they hit that, you know, you know, actually, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I've got no idea how to get through this. And, and, and the, the current crisis that we're in at the moment is massive for that. You know, the, I'm leading this, this multi-million pound business. You know, people are looking to me. I'm employing X number of people. You know, they are looking to me for their jobs, for their security, for their family, for, for their health, all these things. They're looking at me for that responsibility. And, you know, well, who am I to give that? You know, and, and we do get that sort of, you know, imposter syndrome that, you know, just want to go and hide. You know, I've got, got a client that's just gone through that last week and, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's had a tough week because, you know, a, a lot of this stuff is, so I'm going to have to get my, uh, my charger. I bought a battery that said it had three hours life and it's lasted an hour. So, uh. That's uh, that's rubbish, isn't it? Uh, um, but uh, are you are you are you able to uh, be honest with that one, Hannah? Yeah, definitely. Where do you want me to start <laughs> with that one? I mean, you know, I'm um, 24, and I've got you know 25 employees, and it's like um, all of them, bar three of them, are older than me. So you know, oh. but you know, when you're telling people how to do their job, what to do, and uh that's definitely something that i struggled with in the first year i'd say was just wrapping my head around that um i think i've got better at it i don't think i see my age as uh so much of a barrier now um but i was actually dad that said to me age isn't a barrier it's confidence yeah. and i definitely learned that over time um but I've definitely still have my moments. Uh, yeah, when coronavirus hit, I was just like, oh my God, what do we do? And it was quite, I think the thing that knocked me even more was that seeing people that I look up to and think of as experience, like for me, dad is my business partner, is definitely my security because he's obviously, my dad is much older than me and he's, um, I just look to him and think, well, you've exp you're experienced, mm. so you've experienced these things. It's normal for this to be a first for me, but actually this was like, you know, one of those situations <clears> where like, oh, you don't know what's happening. And, he, you know, and even you, Kevin, you know, it's like this, this whole thing is new, you know, and it's, um, I don't know, I think I've felt that the last few weeks, but even prior to that, I've had moments where um, I remember very well. So uh, for our, our business is very much, it's online, it's all on social media. And um, I remember one point, I think it was uh, about a year and a half in and um, I was, no, uh, 14 months in and we'd kind of grown this following and it was getting really big. And I think we just surpassed, yeah, it was when we hit 100,000 followers. Um, and it was like, I just remember one night where I really just felt like, I don't know, I just felt really vulnerable and really exposed because we'd kind of hit this point where we were such a big or perceived to be such a big company in our industry in the wax melt candle world because of the size of this following. And I just, someone had asked me a question that night and whatever that reason, I didn't know the answer. And I just, I just completely um, crumbled. And I don't know why, but that evening it just really knocked me that I didn't know the answer to this question. I just felt like such a fraud. I was like, oh, I don't know, what am I doing? I just really doubted myself and my own knowledge. And in the bigger picture, it really wasn't a big deal. And I've had to learn to deal with that, that I don't know everything and that that's okay. But uh, yeah, I've felt imposter syndrome many times. So, yeah. <laughs> Look, you, you, you find this with top athletes, you know, I've, we had um, uh, the guy's name now, but uh, he won the 100 meters, uh, hurdles uh colin colin jackson yeah yes. um, and he was talking about you know he trained for years at the olympics you know on the the, the uh four by 200 meter relay whichever one it was 
and um, you know he, he got there you know, all of that training all of you know one tons and tons of stuff earned his right to be there and he got there and he he felt imposter syndrome he said i don't deserve to be here you know what why me i'm i'm not i'm not good enough to be at the olympics you know and and so this is not just business owners and leaders you know this this is down to sports people you know that they they do have these little voices in the back of their head that go you know why me you know why why me and uh, and i think that again that self-awareness to accept it and say look that's that's natural and if actually you lose sight of that then i think you you have that sort of sense of hubris that you know you're you're better than you actually are uh, and i think it's it's a good reality check yeah every now and then just to come in and just get that sort of sense of you know who you are and uh, uh but then to go actually no I, I i am here this is this is my job this is what i do uh and then move on but uh you know his, his comments there you know um you know when in doubt you know then challenge it accept positive feedback when people say you know well done and yeah we are sort of yeah no no it's, it's nothing just you know just smile and say thank you yeah. you know i really appreciate the feedback you know that's that's the best thing to do is don't don't you know, if somebody gives you positive feedback never never dismiss it you know always say thank you very much yeah i really appreciate that so uh, that means a lot to me because not only is it going to help them yeah, because they're, they're giving it for a purpose, but it's actually the internal message it says to you. It says it's okay to take this praise. Yeah, and those little things will, will help you and build up over a period of time. So, so except that you can't do it all, you know, that's a, that's a massive one, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certainly now, you know, we, we're, we're trying to juggle a number of things. We're trying to keep the business going. We're trying to grow it. We're trying to deal with team. You know, I think, uh, I think, uh, Hannah, your, your dad has <laughs> been a classic of this uh, almost this week. It was like last week was I'm doing everything. And this week is like, <laughs> what can I, what can I give away? You know, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, have, have you, you, I mean, have you, have you noticed a change in this week to last week? Uh, certainly improved, I would say. Yeah. Um, last week he was on the verge of tears I think he was just so stressed bless him he was you know and it was just he just bottled it up and he was he was literally trying to achieve everything and I think sometimes it takes that breaking point for you to realize you know and just accept okay I can't do it all and he ne I think he needed that to happen and he's kind of had to take a step back take a breath and reassess you know what do I need and I think he's realised that obviously for us that gap is in uh, operations at the moment, having an ops director because he just yeah. can't do it all. Um, and fortunately, you know, we've got someone that's the perfect fit to step into that role. And suddenly I think now that that's sort of on the cards and he just feels supported and like he's going to be able to delegate a lot of the things that were stressing him out to that person, suddenly the world doesn't seem so bad. So yeah, still stressed, don't get me wrong. He's still definitely on that stress level but it's an improvement from last week so heading in the and, right and, and often you know we, we have a, a little slide that is you know it, it's sort of break down break with breakthrough you know you, yeah. you've got to get to that almost that point where you know you realize i can't do this you know hopefully if you control that then that's much better than it being an environmental thing yeah uh, um, but you've got to check in and say you know because you know, when we're leading, we've, we've always got more stuff to do than we can actually physically do. It will always be the case. And that, therefore, your ability to, to delegate off and, and decide what you don't do is far more important than what you do do. Um, and I think that, that's a lesson I've learned over the years is, is, you know, I like to think, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm say not a superhero, but, you know, I can do anything. You know, I've, I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it, you know. And that essence of actually, am I the best person? And even if I was the best person to do it, you know, there, are there more important things I should be focusing my time on? Um, and again, that, but that that again takes clarity of thought, being in the right place to be able to make those decisions. Um, but you know, like it says there, you know, do you've got to ask for help? 
uh, too few people, you know, just don't ask for help. And uh, it still amazes me, you know, I've, I've been putting out on social media, look, free hour of my time to talk to, you know, how few people have actually taken me up on that, you know, and, uh, and, you know, I don't know whether it's people are just sort of got that feeling of, you know, now I need to do this myself or, uh, or, or maybe they just don't like me and they're not giving me proper feedback. I don't know. It might be that. So, so you balance your priorities, be a remarkable leader. You know, uh, I think that sort of, a, a bit of that sort of balance, you know, uh, what did it say there? So, uh, says there is a difference between self preservation and selfishness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's sort of, you know, we, we do have to a bit, have a bit of self preservation, but you know, again, it, I think it goes, that goes back to aligning the goals, you know, and make sure that we, you know, we are aligned and we can see the way, you know, that uh, our purpose is aligned uh to to what we're actually trying to do um uh and again you know lead, leaders uh develop leaders you know um you know culture and vision we there was i was on the the, the youtube or I, I was in a i think it was on my one of my linkedin posts i did a thing about uh sort of purpose-driven businesses and how i think a purpose driven business is going to survive this crisis better than a non purpose driven one one that's just driven on profit and short term goals you know will will struggle more than one that actually has a clear purpose of what it wants to achieve um yeah you know, i know you know we've we've done quite a bit of work on that with the rebrand of of your product Hannah. uh of being really clear what our purpose is uh yeah uh, and i know we haven't done that with you sabrina but the essence of what a roberts has stood for 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 years and years and years is still underlined there oh, but, yes. you know john, john is not he's never done this to make lots of money he's far more concerned about actually getting the plants out to people and making them happy than he Absolutely. is about, uh, bloody yes. doing the invoices which uh i, I keep reminding him he's still got to do the invoices but having that purpose is there so uh so i think that's that's really key uh and uh you know so developing leaders you know looking at the gaps um you know and i think you know when all else fails remember rule one think about your leadership first location second it, it really if, if you want to see remote and technology is getting in the way then it will you know if you want to see it as as actually a a better place to be with our leadership it can be i really feel that i really feel that you know if, if you people are saying you know we're going to be different as we come out of this than we went into it and i think yes we will as long as we embrace it you know as long as we sort of see the benefits and use these tools use this way of actually learning a different and i think better management style uh, so if it's not better than it was before, we'll just revert back to type when we come out of this. Uh, but I think, you know, people have got that time to think about the type of business they want to run, how they want to run it, that the people are the most important asset in your business. So, you know, are you using your people wisely? And I know, you know, we, we've looked in a lot of companies about the, um, when time, things like this happen, it's a, it's a great, um it, it sort of it's like separates the the good staff to the not so good staff you know the good ones float to the surface and you really see it they're bought into the values and the purpose and they bend over backwards and work with you and the, the other ones the chaff just fall to the bottom of the ocean you know that above the line below the line it, it really does there's no no people on the fence anymore they, you're going to go one way or the other way um and and therefore you know when we come out of this that sort of should be at the core of your mind that you know you can only lead good people um you know if, if, if you don't have good people you just can't lead them you know you have to manage them and, and that's the hard work part of it so cool well we've uh, we've run over a little bit and i've run out of wine so uh, <laughs> any any final thoughts comments sabrina 
Um, no, I don't think so. Thank you. I can. Um, the, the, those last two sections, um, except that you can't do it all, and the next one. Um, uh, the, the, I'm not going to get John to read all this. I'm not being negative, but I know it won't happen. But if I could just get him to read those two, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> cool, Hannah. Just going to unmute myself. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I take from it. Well, certainly when all else fails, remember rule one. Um, thinking about yourself as well, and that it's not selfish to do that. Um, thinking the way other people about how they want to be treated, how they want to be um, managed, you know, how are they thinking, basically. And also allocating time to do that. That's been my downfall. I've not allocated enough time to recognise what kind of a um, person are they, you know, their disc profile and managing it accordingly to that. I kind of have just assumed that the work culture would just continue at home. And I think I failed to realise that people work, certainly when they're not in the business, when they're at home in their own environment, they're going to work on their in their way you know rather than the necessarily how they would work in the office it is two different places so yeah. cool yeah good gary final final words uh, same as same as hannah really it's just to, to try and learn, you know look, look at how the guys are you know have been working and how they are working now and, and try and you know get get to their level try and be you know what works best for them yeah you know, to, to yeah. try and you know coach them through through this and get through to the other side but um there's some um, I mean, quite interesting you seeing like you like you said seeing the chaff float to the bottom and see <laughs> the, the, the it, does, it does it's amazing you sit back and you just yep you just mark the card mark the card in some instances it's, it's it's been like oh yeah I, I expected that and then others it's like no i, I didn't see that one coming you yeah, know? yeah 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 it's like it's, it's amazing yeah some some surprise you that come out of nowhere and overachieve and others that you thought were bankers go wow i, mean, I wasn't expecting that but as i say it, it really does sort of shake things up so uh, cool well look thanks guys for being uh, the guinea pig uh hopefully it's been enjoyable and uh you know we'll uh what i'll do is i'll uh i've got a couple more of these uh and i'll i'll get something out sort of uh over the weekend or monday and uh we'll so pencil it in for the diary and uh make sure you've got plenty of beer for for next time because uh you know you can't can't be running out of I mean, wine on a friday night so uh, lovely well cheers guys have a super weekend and uh we'll catch up with you next week Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.